Hey, and welcome to the last section of the chapter, section 1.6, Solving Compound and Absolute Value Inequalities. So today, we're going to take the stuff that we did for the past couple days and put it all together into one lesson. So let's take a peek. First, we needed some vocab words. We're going to start off with a compound inequality. It consists of two inequalities joined by the words and, or the word or, so the word and, and the word or, two separate words. An intersection is a graph of the compound inequality containing the word and, and the union is the graph of a compound inequality containing the word or. So, or is union, intersection is and. Now we're going to be asked to solve something like this. This is what a compound inequality could look like. So it's 8 is less than 3y minus 7 is less than or equal to 23. So there's two different ways that you can solve this, and I'm going to show you one way, and then I'm going to show you another way just to see what you like better. So the first way, I'm going to add 7 to the middle, to the outside, and to the far left, because there are two inequalities, just like there would be two equal signs. So we keep going. We have 15 here is less than 3y is less than or equal to 30. Now, how do we get rid of that 3? We have to divide all the sides by 3. So we are dividing all sides by 3. Continuing, we have 5 is less than y is less than or equal to 10. So now, how do we go about reading this? I'm going to take this side of the y and go 5 is less than y. So now we would graph this part. And how do we put it on our number line? I'm going to throw down a 5. I'm going to throw down a 10. You can put numbers in between here just to make sure we know what we got. But I'm just going to put an open circle. Remember, an open circle because it's not underlined for this. Now, which way am I going to shade? Remember, our variable is on the right, so I cannot follow the arrow. So I'm going to shade to the right. And then, how do I read the other part? I have y is less than or equal to 10. Well, now y is on the left this time with a closed circle on 10. So I know I'm going to shade to the left. So I'm going to shade everything in between my two points because this is a and statement. This is a intersection. As I finish writing intersection, if I finish... Fit it in. This is again an and statement and is an intersection. So let's take a look how else we can do this. So again, we can split it up right away if we want to. So if you don't like solving it that way, that's fine. I'm now going to take the middle and 10. So now it's 10 is less than or equal to 3y minus 2. Split it up like that. And then go from here this way to have 3y minus 2 is less than 19. So now you can split it up like this. If you do split it up like this, you can just solve it as one inequality. So let's solve it as one inequality. Let's add the 2 over. Then we have 3y less than sign or equal to 12. Solving for y, we divide by 3, so y. And then we have, we're dividing by 3, so it is 4. So now we have 4 is less than or equal to y. Now, continuing with the blue inequality, we add 2 to the other side, add 2 to the other side. We have 3y is less than 21. So now y is less than 7 because we divided by 3. And so now we have a 4 and we have a 7. From your blue inequality, it's an open circle. y is on the left, so we can follow the arrow. So we're shading to the left. And then in your green equation, it's a closed, or sorry, a green inequality. It's a closed circle, and the variable is on the right, so we cannot follow the arrow. So we shade in the middle. A, again, it is an and statement because we are shading right in the middle. It is an and and a intersection. Number three, now it is a or statement, so we are just going to solve this one and then solve this one. 
So let's go ahead, we subtract 3 here, subtract 3, and so now bring down your x, x is less than negative 1, and then we have an or statement. So now how is this negative attached to the negative 4? We have to divide out that negative 1, divide out that negative 1, so we bring it down so it is x. Remember when we multiply or divide by a negative number we have to flip the inequality and now it becomes a positive 4 again please remember it is a or statement so now let's go ahead and graph this I'm going to put 4 on this side I'm going to put negative 1 on the left side so now in the blue guy we have x is greater than or equal to 4 so it's a closed circle I want to shade to the right so I'm going to shade on the right side and then going to the red inequality it's a open circle because of the less than sign I want to shade on the left side because you can follow your arrow because your variable is on the left and this is what a graph looks like of a or statement or a union now number four where they get a little bit different here now is the absolute value of x is less than 2. So how would we do this? Now remember when we had an equal sign we had to pull that out of the absolute value twice and make it negative. So let's take a peek at uh, number 4 and see what happens. We have x is less than 2 which is completely fine right? exactly what you did before with the equal sign but now when we make it negative x and negative 2 we have to flip the inequality it's almost like we're multiplying by a negative so when you pull it out and make the second number negative you have to flip the inequality and so now let's go ahead and graph this here we have negative 2 and it's a open circle we are going to be shading to the right and then at 2 we have a, another open circle shading back towards the left so we're going to shade in the middle and so now here we have a and statement with a less than sign, big key less than sign with an absolute value, we get an and statement. Well, let's try it with number five with the greater than or equal to statement. Again, we can take that D out right away, greater than or equal to five. But now remember, when we go D and a negative five, we have to flip the inequality. So we make it a less than or equal to sign. And so now let's graph this guy. We have a negative 5 again with a closed circle. We are going to be shading to the left because the variable is on the left so we can follow the arrow. And then we have a 5 and that is also a closed circle shading to the right because the variable is on the left. I follow the arrow. And so now what is this? This is a OR statement. What gave us the OR statement was the greater than sign. So another big key here, if it's a greater than or greater than or equal to statement, it is a or statement. And if it's less than or less than or equal to statement, it is a and statement. Let's try a couple more here. So with 6, what do we do with 6? Same thing we would do if it was an equation. We would go 2x minus 2 is greater than or equal to 4. What else do we have to do? We have to go 2x minus 2 is less than or equal to what kind of a number? A negative 4. Now that we have our two inequalities set up, let's go ahead and solve. So 2x is greater than or equal to 6 because I added the 2 over. Now I'm dividing by 2. x is greater than or equal to 3. So I'm going to go to the blue equation now. Again, I add the 2 over, so it's 2x is less than or equal to negative 2. Now I divide by 2, so x is still less than or equal to negative 1. I didn't flip my inequality because I divided by a positive number. So let's go ahead and graph this. I have negative 1 right here with a closed circle on negative 1. I'm going to be shading to the left. And now here with x, I have a, again, closed circle on 3, shading to the right. So now when I shade, I find out that I have a OR statement. And why do I have an OR statement? Because I have a greater than or equal to, greater than or equal to inequality. Last one here, number seven.
Now we look at number seven. It's a absolute value with an inequality, but this absolute value is not by itself. Do we see how this three is being multiplied to the absolute value and we're taking away six? Well, we have to get that absolute value away from all the numbers. So let's go ahead and try it. We're going to add six to the other side. So now we come up with uh, three times the absolute value of two z minus four absolute value less than 18. How do we get that three away from the absolute value? I'm going to divide both sides by three. And so now we are left with the absolute value of two z minus four is less than six. Now once you get it to this point, notice how the absolute value is all by itself. There is nothing on the outside of the absolute value. Nothing over here, nothing over here besides the inequality. So now we can pull it out of the absolute value and solve. So now we have 2z minus 4 is less than 6, just like you normally would with an equation. And then we have 2z minus 4 is now greater than negative 6, solving both sides. So we add 4, add 4. Here we have 2z is less than 10. z is less than 5. And with the blue inequality, add 4 to both sides. So we have 2z is greater than negative 2. Dividing by 2, z is greater than negative 1. And so now we have with a less than sign, if we were to graph it, we would have a and statement because it is a less than sign with an absolute value. So let's see. Actually, let's go ahead and graph it just real quick to see if it is an and statement. So I have negative 1 here. I have 5 right here. It is an open circle. I'm going to shade to the left and on negative 1 I still have an open circle I'm going to shade to the right and so we shade everything in between correct it is an and statement because it is a less than sign with a absolute value again it is a less than sign with an absolute value and that does it for section 1.6 solving compound and absolute value inequalities good day